crew put the team together. Uh, our biggest problem is I try to put too much on the news every night. The crew tries to bring too much. It was going to be a 30-minute show. Most nights, as you know, it's over an hour. Some nights it's been two hours. A lot of nights an hour and a half long. Looks like we've got about an hour of material together this evening. I had another big run-in with a domestic checkpoint. This on the heels of uh, announcements that Homeland Security is running checkpoints all over the country, including in the middle of the nation, dragging men, women, and children uh, out of their cars. Uh, and some of the news I won't get to tonight, I'm going to cover now. But the nightly news is coming up. We, at the end of the show, we're going to have a big breakdown on subliminal messages and how you're being targeted and manipulated. I think this is some of the most important material. Uh, must have been a few weeks ago, I brought to McBreen's attention a few examples of subliminals uh, that uh, Rob Dew had pointed out. Um, I think we're going to create an email in the future that's just for people to send us examples of subliminals that you've seen on billboards, uh, in the newspaper, in magazines are big ones. Because the, the social engineers know how the brain works. They know your subconscious mind is about a thousand times, a lot of scientists say a hundred times, I, I think it's more like a thousand times, more powerful than your conscious mind. That's why they say, uh, go with your gut or woman's intuition. Well, it's not going with your gut. Your brain makes a whole bunch of calculations and then tells you, I don't like this, or I don't like this person, or I don't like this deal. And then your conscious mind uh, will tend to, uh, you know, make excuses or whatever. But it's never as powerful as the subconscious mind. It's not even, not even in the same league. So the establishment is targeting the subconscious mind. So that's coming up. Some of the other news, uh, I see these type of reports every day in the U.S., in Europe, and in England. Police spy unit crossed the line, says Lord MacDonald, former director of public prosecutions, accuses Metropolitan Police of monumental misjudgment in allowing undercover officers to give false evidence. But you read the article, they're not accused of it. They train police all over the U.S. to lie in court against people. Uh, so I thought that report was interesting. Looking at how the U.S. standard of living is imploding, we're going to cover that uh, during the main news tonight. In fact, I've, I'll actually pull that article out here because it's so important. Uh, it, it's all mirrored by exactly what the social engineers are doing over in England. British families now spend half their monthly income on rent figure show. And, of course, coming up, Senator says, TSA forced me to go through body scanners. Uh, this I'm going to cover tonight. But, but, again, the problem is I try to get sped up to cover it all and then don't really even amply get into it because I'm too busy scrambling to move the next story. Uh, law bans cash for secondhand transactions. Just incredible attack on cash. So they have you in a digital economy, a cashless system, so they can put fines and fees on everything you do. You ain't seen nothing if you think these dozens of new fees uh, are bad. Uh, if you think it's uh, out of control, Bank of America and others wanting $5 uh, for every transaction you do on your credit card or debit card with your money, charging you to get access to your money. The, 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 in Europe right now, they're moving towards an open private dictatorship of the same central banks that run our country where you pay your taxes to them and European Union member nations can never vote their way out. They're trying to get governments to vote to never allow the countries to get out, which you can't do. That's called being conquered. But because it's not military, oh, it's military once you're under it. Well, you signed on to this. Now here's the troops. I mean, it's just incredible things that when the history books are written, if we ever get out of this new dark age, this attempt at bringing us into a new dark age, it's going to boggle the mind that things ever, ever got this insane, this out of control. Uh, but uh, this article will cover more during the financial section of the news. It's in the second part um, that we've uh, charted uh, this evening. Uh, this is out of the Christian Science Monitor. CNBC also had it. The long, steep drop for American standard of living. And guess what? Globalism, NAFTA, and GATT was a screw job. And it didn't help the third world countries. It didn't help us either. It helped the mega banks and the mega corporations 
consolidate power. They don't want a free market. They don't want you doing well. They want to wage war against free societies and consolidate total control. Now, coming up a few times in the nightly news, I'm going to plug the 2011 money bomb. And all I'm going to say is this. Four years ago, this will be the fourth annual. The fourth one's coming up November 3rd. Four years ago, listeners started a money bomb because Ron Paul had had one. It was popular. And I said, look, uh, I'm going to try to operate off videos and book sales. And I, I, and I didn't want to be under the radar, but I just wanted to be somebody calling for others to stand up. But people said, no, Alex, you got to go to the next level. And it was the money from that first money bomb that gave us the confidence to hire a few more crew members to move into a better office, to start looking for one, it took us about a year, and to move into a 7,500 square foot facility. It was subsequent, the next two money bombs, that allowed us to get the space next door when it opened up to build this TV studio and to hire the new crew members and make the pure investments that's needed. I mean, $300,000, $400,000 sounds like a lot, but when you hire five, six, seven people, when you pay the taxes on top of that for hiring an employee, most employees don't know you pay 20, 30% on top of them to the government, on top of the taxes they pay. I mean, what a screw job. Uh, and then we buy all this equipment. It's all prosumer, but still it's expensive and all the cables and the companies and companies coming in and screwing us. I mean, we're not some big mega corporation that's built a bunch of networks or built a bunch of systems. This is true grassroots, true cutting edge, true vanguard, trailblazing, pioneering what's happening. And with the whole criminal agenda coming down on us like a ton of bricks, believe me, I can feel the angel of death's wings flapping around me. The death threats, the provocateur actions, all the weird crap I've gone through as of late, I don't even talk about on air. All I'm asking you to do is fuel our tanks, fuel our rocket tank to take this to the next level and blast out of this, this, this system and the God of this world. We are trying to engage the globalist in the air through their media propaganda system with our weapon, the truth. They are the Goliath. We are the David. But we have the truth, and it is a mighty weapon. So please, fuel us going into 2012 and all the craziness coming. I just pray that next October or next November 2012, we're even here <laughs> operating. They're now admitting we're in a depression. The globalists are now admitting that our society is imploding. Uh, last year, I launched the money bomb over a month before because I knew the economy was falling apart. I knew we, we had a, a goal of half a million dollars to raise. Technically, I did the actual math. It, it cost over $4 million. I've said five, but I was corrected by the accountant. It cost over $4 million to run this place every year. Sounds like a lot, but in devalued dollars, it's not that much. 35 employees, three or four contractors, all the IT, all the bills, all the crap, all the, uh, just all of it. People say, wow, Alex Jones makes $4 million a year. No, no, I don't make $4 million a year. But I wonder what these billionaires are doing. I mean, I live like a king off a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, and I'm happy to. I mean, I need to be secure, take care of my family. I do take some of the money that comes in from books I've written, films I've made, all that. But I don't want more, more, more at the end of the day. Uh, 90 plus percent of all the money that comes in here goes in to this operation. And I would literally give my life for liberty and freedom for my children. This is not about monetary gain. You know, the globalists create some type of psychological guilt where people that are politically involved aren't allowed to have heat in their house or have lights or cameras to present their information. We've been taught we're supposed to be poor, bankrupt, and failed. No. It's time for people to vote with their dollars for the type of information, the magazines, the videos, the music, the television, the news that you want to see. Just 10 years ago, you couldn't buy organic food in most supermarkets. Now, it's the most popular thing out there, so the globalists are coming out with fake organic. But the point is, people voting with their dollars has caused a total revolution in what you can get at the store. And now Mike Adams last week sitting in broke that incredible news of the Cornucopia Society that did the test and found that Kellogg's and others have all these fake 
organic fronts, but the good news is we've built organizations. That's now being exposed, that a lot of this organic stuff isn't organic, but it turned out hundreds of companies really were organic and weren't filled with GMO and pesticides and all the, steriliz you know, all the sterilization garbage. My point is, is that you have voted with your dollars. And again, what I literally have a passion for is liberty and freedom and getting information out to people. And it is through you spreading the word. Even if you can't give a dollar to this organization, spread the word on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. What you're doing is so incredibly powerful. And the fact that you've supported me for 16 years by spreading the word and buying the products and all and supporting the sponsors, that now we've gotten to this level. Everything we've done so far is just a launch pad to launch that rocket against the globalist. You know, I was going to have like a really high-tech site. We ran out of time where we launch a missile over and it goes over to a pyramid of the New World Order and destroys it. But then I said, no, let's just go with we're going to blast off and, you know, you know, go to the next level, you know, with a rocket. But, but, but I mean, that's what this is. And my goal with this new body bomb is to hire a couple new employees, probably another overall TV director, maybe another graphics person, a couple more reporters, that'd be great. Um, and try to then give a few little raises to people that have really shined here at the office. Uh, buy a few more cameras for the field, because some of our cameras are five, six years old and been hit by cops and people and are breaking. And to put in this fiber optic upload system that cost about $60,000, because that's how we would actually put this on cable and TV. We won't just be one satellite uplink on some big network. We'll have certain cable systems that want to get it and certain satellite systems that have already said they want to get it. That costs a lot of money, not only to put the system in, but to have it tested, upkept, and sent out. I've actually visited TV studios around the country that do it. I visited uh, some local Austin studios. I visited RT in, in Los Angeles. When I was there, they were interviewing me, and I got the specs on the system they're using. So there's just a lot of things we need now to go to the next level. This is all kind of beta here. That's why the show's fluid, doesn't really have commercials yet, because we're just getting it ready for TV. And then always for PrisonPlanet.tv members, you'll have expanded shows where we're not sure if the show is going to be 30 minutes or an hour yet, but then a lot of times it'll kick into overdrive. A lot of it is somebody like me, a talk radio host, who's not scripted and doesn't go off teleprompters, learning to try to crystallize it and write it in my head, you know, that crystallized truth and, and, and my analysis and just punch it out there uh, immediately right at the start. So, again, what you've got is the mega billionaires that control trillions of dollars. And Bank of America that now wants 79 trillion, that our entire national debt's 14.4 trillion. And, and they're beyond kings. It's not about money. It's not about power for them. Um, it's about control. And they see free market economies, wealthy people, people that are comfortable. See, if you are making $100,000 a year and you got a decent house and decent cars and a little bit of money in the bank and a swimming pool, you're not poor. You have time to be politically involved. You have time to be uppity and say, I don't want to be your slave. I mean, you know, America's still a great country. You can live like a king in upper middle class, 100000 you know, whatever dollars a year. But as they devalue our currency, as they deindustrialize us, as they even get rid of our service economy, that entire future is being destroyed. For these trillionaires, these people that control trillions, these people that, that, that sit on top tens of billions, they are they are waging war against a good life. They've said that. They want a post-industrial world. And so it's going to be up to, just like in 1776 and other successful revolutions against oligarchs, it's going to be up to the middle class and people who are intelligent and formed in the working class who want to get into the middle class. America always had the biggest middle class in the world. That's why we had half the wealth in the world. So we had a big middle class, about 60% of the population. We were the only country in the world, other than Argentina, that had a very small, poor class. Look at Argentina now. They went under globalist. In a few decades, they're now the, one of the poorest countries in the hemisphere. It was the saying is, riches in Argentine, but their people got bought off as well. We have resources. We have, we have science. We have hardworking, good, diverse people. But the globalists are threatened by you doing well. 
And it's going to take middle class people getting angry, getting off the bench, choosing what side they are, and supporting alternative media, which will become the new media. We're reaching millions and millions of people a day, tens of millions a week, millions of new people every week. So please go to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com and donate today because we had a month before last time to raise $100,000. And then we raised 300 and something thousand on the actual day of the money bomb. So I want to ask you to donate at InfoWars Money Bomb today or to become a PrisonPlanet.tv member. Are you guys ready to go? We got all those news packages ready? Fantastic. Um, you know, it's really simple. I'll get into some advertising news for you. You can pull up the numbers. CNBC at its top rated show. In fact, I saw this in the news today. Salon was bragging that, ooh, Rupert Murdoch's Fox Business only has 88,000 viewers per hour during primetime. And, ooh, CNBC has 230-something thousand during their primetime. You can pull up the Salon article, actually. Um, I forget the exact headline. It's something like Rupert Murdoch's Type in Rupert, Rupert Murdoch's Fox Business failing, and, and I or not doing a, Rupert Murdoch's answer to CNBC not doing well. I think that was the headline. Rupert Murdoch's answer to CNBC not doing well. But but this shows what paper tigers they all are to begin with. I looked up the budget of Fox Business. It's something like fifty something million a year. I looked up the budget of uh, Fox News. It's like three or four times that. Last time I checked, like two hundred something million. Yeah, there it is, CNBC, Million Dollar Portfolio. No, that's not it. That's something about CNBC. It'll be under news. You won't get it under web. Web's always the oldest thing that's up there. You'll click news. Rupert Murdoch's would-be CNBC killer suffers in the ratings. Salon, that's it. No, it's, it's the top one, right? No, no, no. It, it's, it's just right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, go ahead and show folks that. But thank you. Uh, guys are quick. I just... Uh, this is all on the fly, teleprompter free. And now we got a stupid ad up there for the New York Times. Hey, look, the New York Times knows where to advertise. It's a good little buddy salon. Anyways, make a long story short. Let's scroll down and see how my memory was. I was giving you the ratings numbers for them. Yeah, yeah, here it is. They're bragging that CNBC averages during, during their prime time 263,000. And Fox Business tops off at 85,000 during their prime time. Now, I've actually looked at the actual ratings. That's not true. Fox tops off at about 150,000, Fox Business, and CNBC at about 260,000. So that number is accurate. That, that lower number is not accurate. You can go pull up, buy the numbers online, see the latest Nielsen for yourself. I mean, they must have picked some off-week holiday or something to pull that number, or they're just lying. But, but that doesn't matter. That's not why I'm getting into that for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the reason I'm showing you that information is to break down the final domino to fall is that we don't have power if the alternative media is a joke. You know, I got really mad a few weeks ago when I saw another news article, and I'd seen one months before in New York Magazine, where they were talking about Alex Jones, yours truly, and it was a Fox head of programming saying, Alex wants to be on Fox News, but he'll never be here, and we don't want him. That's like some wart-covered hippopotamus telling me I want to have sex with it. I, I don't. I mean, that'd be like a toilet full of vomit telling me I want to marry it. I mean, I don't want to sell my soul and be pathetic and also fail and not reach anybody. I want to trailblaze. I want to let it all hang, all hang out. I want to do it my way. You think I'm just some bought little hooker you put up there, painted up like a tart for old men to watch? You think, I mean, you think I'd sell my soul for anything? I'd sell it for nothing. You can offer me the whole world. Nothing. Nothing, not threats, not nothing, but they still steal it. They still get up there and say, Alex Jones wants to be on Fox News. I challenge you to tell me where I want to be on Fox News. Maybe they're delusional. I know, I know I've talked to sponsors that are advertisers on Fox, and they're like, I told Fox the great results I get with you. Why, I get three times the response with you 
that I get on Fox News, on O'Reilly. I told them that. Alex, I think you ought to be on Fox. And I tell the sponsor, yeah, you spend $10,000 for a minute on Fox at night and get no response. And then you spend $500 with my radio show and you get triple the response. And they're like, but don't you want to be on Fox? And you're like, don't you get it? I'm already bigger than them in the aggregate. It's, it's a made-up illusion. They're, they're gloating over 260,000 viewers and gloating that Fox has 80-something thousand? I mean, Coast to Coast AM has 16,000 listeners a night. Rush Limbaugh has 20 million. I've got 3 million a day on AM, FM, shortwave, XM, all of it put together. My websites have over a million visitors a day confirmed on Google Analytics, any of the sites. You can check it for yourself. I mean, I, I, mean, I reach on YouTube conservatively a week alone with all our channels and other auxiliaries combined. 10 million people, most of them new and young a week. You people, you people, I've seen the numbers for CNBC. They might have one million different people tune in a week. I've got millions a day, and I've got these jackasses with big, giant, glistening buildings and people in their suits, all dressed up fancy, telling me how great and powerful they are. It's like the little old man behind the curtain in The Wizard of Oz. I mean, I'm Hulk Hogan in his prime, and they've got some 62-pound anorexic little guy with a giant bobblehead telling me I'm a wimp, telling me I, 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 I can't defeat them. And again, I'm not in this to ego or anything. I actually know how big I am. I know how dangerous this is. I know this isn't a game. See, mainstream lies and propaganda go out once and they're big. Our stuff is like in Star Wars where they fire the laser in the in the trash compactor and it keeps bouncing around because it's magnetically sealed. It's just like ricocheting. We throw a rock into the pond, it goes on forever. That's the difference. And we also reach people that aren't in a zombie trance. Not only is our audience giant, but we have people that have been woken up out of the trance. We have the true revolutionaries. We have the true people that are awake and understand or seeking after knowledge and don't want to be slaves. I mean, you've got, and I'm not knocking old people. A lot of old people are great supporters, fully awake. But Fox has old geriatric zombies who never woke up watching them. So does CNN. So does MSNBC. That's why they love big terror events, because it actually gets the general public to tune in. And they're like vampires that hadn't had any blood in 10 years. And, you know, there's a big disaster. Everybody tunes in, and they can now you know, actually have a big audience. Yeah, when the feds blow something up, CNN might have 5 million viewers that day instead of half a million. Same thing with Fox, so they can still push a hoax. See, the last domino they've got to fall is that even people like myself, oh, look at the big glistening teleprompters and fancy sets and info babes, you know, who look like they could star in a porno movie tomorrow. Uh, it was smacking their lips with sexual delight. It's all fake. She's a union girl, just like the girl in the porn. She doesn't want you. It's all fake. You understand what I'm saying? It's all fake. Fake. The last domino is that we don't realize what a joke they are. And the last big domino is sponsors. But it's already started to happen. I see big national ad campaigns copying my information and, and, and my truth, but spinning it. And I see it happening everywhere. And I've talked to big ad execs and others. And this has already started. This has already begun. You've got people spending 10, 20 times what the advertising should actually cost in the New York Times, CNN, Fox News, all these, CNBC. you got people spending many, 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 many times, two, three, four, five, 10, 20, 30 in some cases, what something is actually worth per viewer because of the fake prestige. Take the Super Bowl. 70 million viewers tops, $2 million, $3 million for a one-minute ad or more. There are people with YouTube channels. There are guys with gun channels where they sit there sh every week shooting pumpkins or bottles of Coca-Cola, and you'll get 5 million views per deal, and there's a little ad on there, and I've called some of those guys up because I've thought about starting a shooting channel myself to inject liberty issues into it and fund ourselves, and these guys are making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. In a week, they got 20 million viewers on YouTube. In, 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 in a month, 
They've got more than the Super Bowl, but there's not the prestige. You got hillbillies and, and some Russian guy, you know, with tens of millions of views a week, and 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 they don't get any prestige, nothing. It's all hollow. It's all fake. With a bunch of weird knuckle dragging executives going, Alex Jones wants to be with us. Yeah, I want to hang out in some collapsed building's broom closet with you. I've been on Fox News. I've been on CNN. I've been on CNBC. Repeatedly. Zero response on traffic to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Zero or next to zero. Is pathetic. But not a response from listeners or traffic, but suddenly big sponsors are ready to spend some money. My God, I saw you on Fox News as if I had arrived somewhere. It's like watching people at a fake Indy 500 and they're out there in soapbox cars telling me how fast they are when I got a thing with 700 horsepower that can drive on the ceiling. And I'm just, I'm, I'm nobody. That's the point. This is an illusion. I'm just somebody who doesn't care if they kill me because I love life so much I'm willing to give it up because I'm sick of watching these con artists get away with everything. I'm calling their bluff. I'm sick of it. I'm done. I'm through. You're a paper tiger. You're a joke. You're a fraud. And, 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 and to sit there and watch them engorged, Fox News makes billions and billions a year. And it's the king, and their biggest shows have 2 million visitors, 2 million viewers a night. And I happen to know that your average syndicated radio show is reaching more than that. It's all an illusion. It's all because big corporations are creating the illusion. You know, big corporations have been caught wanting to create a run on the Christmas toy because they can make billions, and they will actually pay to have shipments diverted or their own people come in and buy them off the shelves and then pay a local reporter. They've been caught, it's called the Christmas toy phenomenon, where they'll come in and buy it up and have the news report on a run of it so that everybody thinks they've got to have it. And that's basically what it is. Big mega corporations will sit there and pump money into these fake paper tigers so that it looks like it's got the funding, it looks like it has the viewers, and it's all a complete fraud and a joke. So that's my point. It is chicken feed when it comes to actual viewers. In fact, before we go to the nightly news, let's just show people right now. Go to the Alex Jones channel. We have a lot of other auxiliary channels, hidden channels, channels we don't say are ours because of censorship and attack programs to bring us down. This is just YouTube, not the hundreds of other major sites where you can go and see videos of the nightly news two days later on Live Leak or Blip TV or Justin TV. I mean, I sent Aaron Dykes and our crew on one of our Justin TV channels, and in two days, they got 3.3 million views. 3.3 million views at Bilderberg 2011. That wasn't counting a million or so on our YouTube. 146 million views, and that has been up since February 11, 2008, three, four years ago. What is that, three and a half years ago? Now, that site didn't have a fraction of those views. It was like a year ago, it was 50 million views. I really started promoting it like a year ago. So it's had close to 100 million views in a year. And then I could take you on a little round the rosy trip. Pocket full of posy, ashes, ashes, globalists fall down. I could take you on a walk of your destruction right here and I could show you right now, without even spending five minutes, 300 million views. <laughs> 300 million views, one platform, and we've just got it started. You know why? Because I don't want to sit around in New York with a bunch of fake Barbie dolls and, and, and live in some $20 million penthouse with some bimbo that doesn't love me. I'm going to sit right here wallowing around like a hillbilly, and I'm going to kick your ass, New World Order. You got that? We are not playing games with you, and you know it. We're coming for you, and we're calling your bluff, and you know it. You are a joke. You are a fraud, and we got a posse. It's the viewers. It's the subscribers. It's the supporters of InfoWars Nightly News. Hell, 
I mean, this is ridiculous. We're not funded by George Soros, David Rockefeller, the New World Order, the Rothschilds, the Queen of England, BP, British Petroleum, any of this garbage. We're funded by you buying the T-shirts, the books, the videos, the subscriptions, and supporting our sponsors. And I'm going to take that money, and I'm going to dump it right back into this organization. I'm going to take some of that money, I'm going to save it to make this organization strong when it's under attack. Because we're taking the position of John Hancock now. And I told my dad this about a week ago. I said, Dad, you think I have turned the heat up and been bold? You ain't seen nothing yet. If you don't know about John Hancock, we're going to do a eulogy to John Hancock so we can all be live by John Hancock. You want to talk about chutzpah, bravado, being macho, whatever you want to call it. John Hancock was the wealthiest man in the, in the colonies, and he would not pay off the governors to leave him alone and to stop huge taxes and regulations harassing his ships, bringing tobacco to Europe and... and, and um, tea out of India back into the United States. And he got jailed. He went through trials. He lost everything he had. And, you know, you read that Declaration of Independence, everybody signing that was going to have hit men trying to kill them, their families being killed. A lot of them had their families killed. They'd be off at war. The British would come and kill their wives and children. And John Hancock, right at the top, signed his name, the biggest and the boldest, right there. He signed it right across the top and lost everything he had. He said, my blood, my treasure, it's all on the line. Boom, John Hancock. Here comes the biggest army the world's ever seen, never defeated by anybody, not the French, not the Spanish, uh, not the uh, Prussians, none of them, never defeated. And he said, you know what? I'm the wealthiest man in the colonies. I'm tired of seeing this corruption. And he put his name on it. Bam, John Hancock. Like, let's pull up the John Hancock signature. It's famous. He also pulled it up on the destroyer, the John Hancock. And that's my position, Okay. I've, I've never lived in fear, but I've always had that concern. But my point is, you know what? At the end of my life, I'm going to be able to look back on no matter what happens to me, in prison, torture, death, I don't care. And I'm going to be able to say, you know what? I didn't give in. I didn't go along with their system. I didn't bow down to corruption. I didn't bow down. Now, there's that John Hancock right there. That's it. You found it. There it is. Death warrant. Look at the rest of them. Right at the top, ladies, because he was signing it towards the end, and he said, well, I'll just sign right up here. Bam. All his property contacted, uh, uh, grabbed, all his ships taken, land taken, everything, hunted. Boom. Because he was tired of being pushed around by a bunch of people. And that's what it's going to come down to. you got to decide. Do you want to be free or do you want to be a slave? Do you want to be a man or do you want to be a mouse? All right, you got in 44 minutes of extra ranting here. It's InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. I've signed the John Hancock, but when you donate, when you support us, when you buy our products, when you promote our sponsors, when you spread the word about us, you're standing right beside us, ladies and gentlemen, not behind us. InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. I salute you all. I, sal I salute the crew as well. Here is InfoWars Nightly News. Take me into the intro.